Yorgos Lanthimos's previous two films have been some of my favorites from this decade. 2015's The Lobster was a dystopian dark comedy that was off-putting to many, but many more, including myself, saw it as a fantastic commentary on modern relationships that was delightfully weird. The Killing of a Sacred Deer was even more bizarre, with the comedic yet terrifying tale capturing my mind long after I saw it. Lanthimos's style and his dark, unsettling humor really appeals to me, He's like a more depressing Wes Anderson, just with less perfect camera work. Now we have Lanthimos' latest film, one that looks to be a departure from his previous work, at least on the surface. The favorite is a period piece set in 18th century England in Queen Anne's court. The film details the supposed but unfounded relationship between Queen Anne, her confidant Lady Sarah, and a newly arrived servant named Abigail. The latter two fight for the affection and approval of the Queen, while she herself struggles to maintain her health and sanity during the conflicts raging at home and abroad. What should immediately be praised is the cinematography and general look of the film. Many have compared it to Kubrick's Barry Lyndon, and these comparisons are not unfounded. Natural light fills every room, with large windows of sunlight obscuring the actors' faces from the camera or even blinding the camera itself. At night, candlelight illuminates the pitch black castle and gives the late night escapades a sinister vibe. The cameras also placed at high angles or in tight spaces, with the crew utilizing a fisheye lens at points just to get certain elements in the frame. All of these work not only to make the castle feel gigantic and empty, but they also work to show the ugliness of the time period and of the characters. The camera work makes the audience feel like they are one of the castle guards, silently watching the madness unfold within their kingdom unable to affect the series of events. We get up close and personal looks into the lives of these horribly flawed people, whether we want to or not. The makeup and costumes are obnoxiously extravagant, and in turn very off-putting and hilarious. There are many dirty or gross-out moments like casual background sex, falling into muddy piles, and vomit. Lots and lots of vomit. The moments of vulgarity are the most similar to Lanthimos' style, where he uses the comedic nature of gross-out humor along with the juxtaposition of the nastiness with the traditionally clean-looking royalty to show how ridiculous the whole proceeding is. There are of course starkly comedic moments and uncomfortable encounters, but the dialogue and acting are quite natural rather than stylistically unnatural as seen as Lanthimos' previous films. Speaking of which, the performances from the three main women are superb. Rachel Weisz as Sarah is at once maniacally strategic and sympathetic in her endeavors, with her character and her relationship to Queen Anne becoming clearer as the film goes along. Emma Stone's performance as Abigail works in an opposite manner, beginning as an innocent and sympathetic character who quickly reveals her true nasty colors. Yet her tactics are not uncharacteristic or unsympathetic, and we do understand how she came to her conclusions even if we don't necessarily agree with them. The true standout is Olivia Colman as Queen Anne, who again gives a dual-sided performance. She begins as a hilariously fragile person, lacking self-control and self-confidence. Yet, as the events of the film fall into place, we get a better, more tragic picture of her. The Queen stops being a joke and becomes a devastating portrait of how power corrupts one's mind, affecting their mental, and metaphorically, their physical health. Watching these three women conceiving and plotting behind each other's backs serve as the highlight for the first half of the film. Every plot twist, dirty trick, and failed attempt are at once gleefully petty and hilarious. The three main performances, along with the invasive camera work, help to express the main ideas of the favorite, not only looking at the ridiculous politics happening behind the scenes, but also at the nature of love and loss. By the end of the film, which up until then has been hilarious and entertaining, the film reveals its true intentions with a bizarrely fascinating final act, which is just as off-putting as Lanthimos' previous films. It's a sequence that left me feeling hollow, confused, and lost. While these feelings would normally keep me away from enjoying a film, this time they made me love it even more. I found myself looking back at moments that seemed funny at the time, now become heartbreaking, urging me to watch the film for a second time. The Favorite is certainly one of the best movies of 2018. It would earn this position with its performances and filmmaking alone, but the themes and ways the film plays with and expresses them pushes it over the edge into a truly memorable experience, one that I will want to relive and reanalyze for years to come.